I cannot believe it's November already. Winter is coming. It is 42 degrees and raining here, as you can see. Uh, I live in Michigan, so we get a lot of snow, and I've been getting some requests for my tips and tricks for driving a Tesla or electric vehicle in the winter. I've also been seeing a lot of people talking about this online, even for the past month. It seems right when October hit, everyone was freaking out about winter. So I figured I'd condense all my tips and tricks here for you. I'm also gonna make a video about accessories I use in the winter. Um, so there's some stuff actually suggested by Tesla that I'll talk about. Now, to be fair, I picked up my car in February, so I have not even had it a full year yet. Uh, the day I picked it up, actually, we had about four inches of snow though, and the car handled really well. So I'll break this video up into a few sections. I'll put timestamps to each section below in the description so you can check those out. First, probably the most important, we're gonna talk about battery, range, and charging in the winter. Well, first of all, you've probably heard it before, you can expect to lose a decent amount of range in the winter. I usually tell people anywhere from 30 to 50%. To be honest, you're not really gonna see a 50% range decrease unless you're going 80 miles per hour, in a blizzard with the heat cranked all the way to high. More typically in winter, you'll see around a 30% loss of range. The main culprits that are gonna use your battery, of course, as always, number one is speed. After that, it's really just the temperature uh, reducing the efficiency of the battery and there's not much we can do about that. And then your HVAC system. If you do have the heat up really high, it does use a lot of extra energy, but keeping it you know, somewhere around maybe 68 to 72 Fahrenheit is not gonna be all that much of an impact. You can imagine even in a smaller car, your body's providing some heat, the seat heaters are helping. So as long as the heat isn't blasting like crazy, you don't have to worry too much about that. So one of my earlier videos, I did test how much energy the heater used. Uh, I drove all the way to work uh, with the heat blasting on high the entire time. And then the next day, I turned the heat completely off and I tried to go the exact same speed, take the same route and everything. Uh, so it was comparable and I saw how much energy that used and actually I was surprised it was a pretty big difference But the difference between a normal day for me of just keeping the heat around 70 and The day where I had the heat completely off the difference wasn't all that much when your battery is cold It will also be less efficient which it's gonna be cold most of the time because even doing a lot of driving the batteries are so efficient They won't always fully warm up just from driving so luckily if you can charge at home We get to start our days with a full charge every day so most of the time this won't matter the only time you really need to think about this is if you're going on a really long drive and you're not sure of the charging situation or if your car is going to be parked for long periods of time not plugged in that'll cause the battery to get cold you'll actually see a symbol on your battery that shows it's cold it's like a little snowflake and this means you have reduced capacity so that cold part of the battery the blue part is still there you still have that energy but it's not accessible the car won't allow you to use it until the battery warms up a little bit so you may see while you're parked for a while your miles will go down dramatically they will come back as you start to drive a bit this also leads into charging while cold the battery can't charge while it's cold so best practice for charging is to plug in immediately when you get to your destination from a drive you don't want to let the car sit and have the battery cool off because if the battery gets too cold it literally cannot charge and the car will have to spend its time warming the battery before it starts to get a charge. Now where this really becomes a problem is if you're using anything less than a NEMA 1450, so just a standard wall outlet or something, there's not enough energy flowing to warm the battery and charge it at the same time. Even at a supercharger, it can take a while for your battery to get to a good temperature to where it'll charge at full speeds. Tesla does this to protect the battery. Charging cold batteries is not good for them, and that's one of the best parts about these cars is the batteries are really strictly managed, so they will never be damaged from charging it in appropriate temperatures or too quickly or anything like that. So another good tip is to finish charging right before you leave. So right now what I do is I use Teslafy and when I get home at night and plug in, my battery charges to 80% and then about an hour before I leave, it starts charging again from 80% to 90% and it usually finishes about 10 minutes before I'm ready to go. This warms the battery and makes it more efficient for driving. I get more regen when I start driving, um, but I won't need to use Teslify to do this for much longer because in an update coming soon, you're gonna be able to tell the car, this is what time I plan on leaving, so please finish charging at that time. And every day when you come out to the car, the battery will have just finished charging and it'll be warm and more efficient. Another thing to do that goes along with this, especially if you're plugged in, preheat the car before you leave. So just go in your app, turn on your heater for 15 or 20 minutes before you go. That way the car will be warm and you can use less energy from the battery to warm the car 
and it warms the battery again to keep it efficient. So some tips for driving style. Um, of course, the faster you go, the more energy you'll use. So if you are not sure you'll make it to a destination because of the cold, just slow down a little bit. That'll give you a lot more range. That's true all the time, but especially in the winter, your heated seats use way less energy than the HVAC system, and they're way more efficient. If you think about it, if you just turn on the one seat you're sitting in, all the heat pretty much is going into your body. Whereas the HVAC has to heat up all the air and then warm you up. So if you can keep the heater low and keep your seat high, you'll use a lot less energy keeping yourself warm. To go along with that, just plan to dress a little warmer. I wear a little more in the car now than I used to. Um, and to be clear, none of these things are vital. You don't have to do any of this. It's just a way to squeeze out some more range. Uh, on a daily basis, just going to work and back if your commute is less than 100 miles. Most of these things are not 100% necessary. It's just some general tips for using a bit less energy, especially if you have maybe a longer day ahead of you where you have to drive more and don't have as many opportunities to charge. One thing I've heard often online is people say to reduce your regen and use chill mode. So the reasons behind this is regen, when you let off the accelerator, it'll start to slow your car rapidly. And if you're on a slick road uh, with snow, then your car can start to slide. But in my opinion, once you're used to the regen, you don't really need to do that. You know how the car's gonna react, you know how to drive the car. So I personally won't be using either of these tips. Uh, and then the same with using chill mode. The idea is just so that you don't slam on the accelerator and go spinning out or spin your wheels when you're on a slick surface. But again, if you're used to driving the car, you should be able to do that yourself. Um, but if you're worried about having too much power and sliding on the snow, either slowing down or speeding up, you can set those modes and it should make the driving a bit easier. Uh, but for me, I, I like my car to always be the same. I don't want to change the way it drives ever. Um, so I'm not going to use that tip, but a lot of people say they do that. Another driving tip is find an empty parking lot after it's snowed and just drive around in the snow a bit. The traction control on these cars is unbelievable. I couldn't believe it the night I brought my car home. Remember there were four inches of snow the day I bought my car and I was going up a steep hill on the dirt roads and I was really worried because I knew I was on the 19 inch tires um, and the car just handled it like it was nothing all the way home in all that snow. I didn't have one time where I slipped. I started even trying once I got onto my street um, and the car was great. So find an empty parking lot with some snow and just play around and just feel how the car handles the slippery situations, the traction control and everything. So then you'll be more prepared, you know, step on the brakes, see how it slides, check out the ABS, um, and you'll be more prepared if you accidentally get into that situation on the road, you'll know how to handle the car a bit better. Speaking of snow, this video is sponsored by the Model 3 Part Shop. They make awesome accessories like these pedals, which are just cosmetic, or this awesome floor mat that I have in my car. You can see it has really high sidewalls. So check out their store, link is in the description. You can use the code DIRTYTESLA to get 15% off anything site-wide. When you start out in the mornings, especially with a cold battery, your regen will be limited and you may not be expecting it. So you'll let off the accelerator and the car won't slow as much as you think. Um, you can see that by the dotted lines on the top of your screen below your speed. The more dotted lines you have, the less regen you have. Now your regen will come back over time as you drive and warm the battery. But again, these cars are so efficient, they don't produce all that much waste heat. So even on longer drives, you may never fully recover your regen. My drive to work is about 35 miles and in the colder winter months, my regen will never fully recover. All the way to work, going on the highway 75 miles an hour, I'll still have some dots by the time I reach my destination. Some things you can do to the car to increase efficiency. Number one, if you have the 18 inch wheels and you took your aero caps off, put them back on for the winter. You should see somewhere around a 5% increase and every little bit helps, especially when you're losing up to 30% of your range. Get snow tires for your car. I'm being kind of a hypocrite on this one. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm skipping the snow tires this year. And the reason for that is I used the car last year actually with the 19 inch tires, which are worse than the snow, and I had a great time. So I don't feel it's necessary to use snow tires. Now I have used them in the past. I used them on my last car and they're amazing. They do make driving in the snow way easier, way safer, um, but I'm not in the camp that says you have to do it. At least in Michigan, I'm not sure about the other states in the US, you don't have to get snow tires in the winter. Uh, again, they are better, they are safer, but I've been driving for about 15 years and only two of those winters have I used snow tires? All the other winters I got by, of course I did some sliding sometimes, but if you know how to drive in snow, you can just drive more carefully. Again, I'll say it one more time, snow tires are better, they are safer, I don't think it's a necessity, but if you have the money and you wanna get snow tires, it will be better than all seasons, that's for sure. Now if you have summer tires on your car, 
you have to get snow tires. You can't drive in the snow with summer tires. Do not do that. It is possible for your charging port to get frozen. Tesla actually got a bunch of complaints about this issue and like a lot of things, they ended up fixing it with an over the air software update. If you ever are in a situation where your charge port gets stuck, there is an emergency release in the trunk, which I am showing you here. So you just reach up in this little square area and you pull that black tab and that is a manual release for the charger lock. Put Rust-Oleum Never Wet, only step two. So this is actually straight from the Tesla manual. I will show you a screenshot of that. Uh, I bought this stuff, I haven't put it on yet. I'm actually gonna make a follow-up video to this of accessories you can use uh, for your car in the winter that'll help you out in the winter. I'm sure there are many more tips and tricks that you can use in the winter for your electric car or cars in general. I was trying to keep this specific to uh, my Tesla and other electric cars rather than just kind of general winter driving tips that you know, you'd use in any car. With all that said, as long as your daily commute isn't around half of your battery's full charge capacity, you really shouldn't have much to worry about because again, you can leave the house with a full charge every morning. So if there's anything that you think is really important that I left out, comment below. Everybody can have a discussion in the comments, talk to each other. What are your tips and tricks for driving in the winter? Uh, what kind of precautions do you take? What have you experienced before? Again, I haven't experienced a full winter in this car yet, but the couple months of winter I have experienced really wasn't that bad. Um, I did notice I was using a lot of energy, but never once was I in any kind of uh, range situation where I thought I wasn't gonna make it to my destination. Um, so I think this winter is going to go great. I'm excited for some Tesla challenges in the snow. So look for my accessory tips for the winter coming up. I hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video.